Harvey's Technical Marketing Manager with Walters Kluwer Tax and Accounting. And joining us today for a cup of coffee are Ross Sullivan, Chair of the National Tax Policy Group and Radha Mohan, Policy Advisor and Associate at Brownstein. Now, we are going to be discussing some updates from Washington, D.C. as of today, August 31st. And it seems uh, we have had some developments over the weekend on the president's call to allow most American workers to defer paying their 6.2% Social Security payroll tax. And since most companies, large and small, as well as self-employed individuals, will be impacted by this guidance, we thought we should discuss it over coffee today. That's right, Luis. On Friday evening, the Treasury Department issued Notice 2020-65, which answered many of the questions that human resources, accountants, and tax advisors were asking about this executive order as companies decide whether to participate in this deferral. That's right, Roz. And so, Rada, can you give us the highlights? What are the key provisions in the notice? Of course. Luis, there are a couple of things that I would note. First, on the wage threshold, as long as an employee's wages are below the $4,000 threshold during a bi-weekly pay period, the employee qualifies. Second, this is deferral only, not forgiveness. The employer must collect deferred taxes rateably from compensation paid during the first quarter of next year. Employers do have the right to make arrangements to collect taxes from the employee as well. For example, if an employee leaves early, the employer can withhold this from the employee's final paycheck. The last thing I'd note is, though employers might have questions on implementation, there is no contact information in the notice. It simply provides a hotline number, which is somewhat unusual. Thank you, Rada. And Ross, so do employers and self-employed individuals have to participate or is it elective? Well, Luis, we believe that it is elective. Nothing in the notice states that employers must defer collecting these payroll taxes. And Treasury Secretary Mnuchin has been quite clear and consistent in his public comments that the government cannot force employers to participate. Nevertheless, the notice gives most of the details that employers need in order to implement this deferral. And I'd have to say, there's a chance that workers may very well press their employers for the pay increase that this deferral would generate in their paycheck. Russ, that's true. And the National Finance Center, which handles payroll for many government agencies, recently issued a memo announcing that it would make this program mandatory for all employees. So any federal employee whose wages are less than the threshold will have withholding pause. And Rada, I do think you're right. This is makes it more likely that governments across the country will participate in this program in higher numbers than will private sector entities. That's right. And so Rada, what about worker with variable compensation? How do employers determine whether they get the deferral or not? That's a great question. And for variable compensation, as long as your compensation is below that $4,000 threshold for a bi-weekly pay period, the employee qualifies. And it's what's really important over here is that each bi-weekly pay period is considered separately. So this means that an employee who makes 4,100 during one bi-weekly pay period may not qualify for that pay period. But if compensation again dips below the threshold, they'll subsequently be able to qualify. And so Ross, it seems like employers will worry that they will somehow be on the hook to pay the tax on the back end. Does the notice give employers any protection? Well, Louise, the notice does give them some protection, but for many employers, it won't be enough. The notice states clearly that employers in the first quarter of 2021 can collect a double portion of the 6.2% in order to make the payments of the deferred taxes. That, of course, would occur if Congress doesn't come in and forgive the taxes. The notice also says that employers can work out special arrangements with the employees. But if the employee doesn't pay the tax, the notice says the employer is still on the hook. Thank you, Russ. And so, Rada, are there any other unanswered questions? And is there going to be additional guidance from the IRS? Well, Luis, not before September payroll runs. Employers are out of luck. There are still several unanswered questions. For example, 
do employees have the right to have taxes withheld and paid to the IRS? If so, what does that mean for the employer? Do employers have to notify employees about options available to them? How will this be implemented for self-employed individuals? What happens if an employee has several jobs and the collective compensation is above the $4,000 threshold? Okay, and finally, Ross, does this deferral operate independently or might it have an impact on other tax credits like the employee retention tax credit that uh, we know are refundable against payroll taxes? Luis, you've identified uh, an important issue here. So there's only one 6.2% of the employee's compensation. It can't be deferred and given to the employee and also be used to fund for the employer uh, one of these tax credits like the employee retention tax credit, the paid leave tax credit, or the sick leave tax credit. So as a practical matter, we think what is likely to happen, and the IRS may issue guidance on this in the future, is that employers who do participate in the deferral program if they are entitled to the employee retention tax credit or one of these others, they will have to file for and claim a refund that's issued by check from the IRS instead. Okay, so there is uh, definitely a lot of information to digest. We appreciate the guidance and the insights from the Brownstein Law Firm, and we will explore these and other issues at our upcoming fall conferences that are taking place virtually. Uh, the Brownstein Law Firm will be hosting two sessions during the CCH Forward Together virtual conference, as well as the GetWise 2020 virtual training seminar. One session on recent legislative and regulatory tax developments in 2020, and the impact of the elections on tax policy outlook, as well as another session on qualified business income deduction, uh, section 199A. So thank you once again, Ross Rada, for joining me today for a cup of coffee. Thank you for your time and thank you everybody else for watching. Bye-bye. Have a great day.